What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Shauna. There's going to be two topics I'm going to cover. And I want to tell you guys straight up what they are so that you can stick around. Stay through the whole video because, listen, if we don't do our research, we, we really don't understand what's going on. We really don't understand the war. We don't do our research. We're, we're subjecting ourselves to, to violence, not by each other per se, but by others. We're going to subject ourselves to death, heartache, poverty. You got to do your research because all of this stuff that's going on is related to a lot of decisions that we make as black people that make us complicit in the injustices that we are experiencing. I know people ain't going to like to hear that. I know people are not going to like to hear that, but that's okay. That's okay. We are, we are complicit in a lot of things. Here's why I'm going to say that. First and foremost, the first topic I'm going to touch on is Sandra Bland. The next topic I'm going to touch on is that Hassan guy. What's his name? Christopher Hassan, the, the, the white supremacist terrorist who is being released on home, on home arrest until his trial. And why that's dangerous and how we are complicit in this system and how we are allowing things like this to happen. I'm going to tell you why. Let's start with Sandra Bland. Rest in peace to our sister, Sandra Bland. I hope you guys all know who she is. But for those of you guys who don't, she is our sister who was 28 years old. She had just got a job in Texas. She graduated from A&M University. And she's from Chicago. 2015, this sister was pulled over on a traffic stop and later on was found hanging in her cell. She was arrested as a result of that traffic stop. And what's so sad about that situation is um, we all know they killed her. We all know that the wicked devils killed her. And we all know that there were butter biscuit people in these prisons that knew what was going down and yet did nothing to save our system. Nobody's responsible, right? And the narrative is she hanged herself. That is the narrative. So why am I talking about this today? First of all, we all, if you had chose to watch it, we all show, we all saw the video that came out when the police officer had pulled her over. Now, it was a video that surfaced, and he was, according to our sister, Sandra Bland, tailgating her, speeding. And so she decided to move out of his way to allow him to pass her. Instead of him passing her, he decides to pull her over. He comes back with what she thought at the time was a ticket. And she's upset. She's she's visibly upset when he pulls her over in terms of like, what am I getting pulled over for? You were tailgating me. I pulled over so you can pass. And now you come in to write me a ticket. That was the basis of her argument with him. Now, we already know a lot of people and not just black people. A lot of people have attitudes with officers when they get pulled over. I have even seen white people, when they get pulled over by officers, yell and scream at officers, get out of their cars, yelling and screaming at officers, taking their license and flicking it at officers, and they don't get arrested, and they don't end up dead, right? I have seen this plenty of times on videos who have gone viral, showing white people acting the fool with police officers. But this officer in particular, yes, she was upset. Yes, she was upset. Absolutely. Yes, she questioned why she had to put out, put out her cigarette. Absolutely. Absolutely. But let me tell you what he was doing. He was patronizing her. He was irritating her intentionally because he was power tripping on that day. 
and he was going to show Miss Bland who had the power. And at every chance she got at calling him a punk, calling him a P-U-S-S-Y, because I don't know if I have any children on watching me, because sometimes people have their teens watching me, and I love it. I love it. So I'm trying to be very cautious with my filthy mouth. But he was irritating her on purpose. She obviously had her cell phone out recorded. And that is the reason why we're having this conversation right now. Because she had her cell phone out recording this, this officer. But in the trial or in the case that was brought against him, that was later dismissed, because we already know that they always dismiss stuff. But in the case, he said that he feared for his life. How is it that he feared for his life when she was visibly recording him with her camera when he decided to tell her to get out of the vehicle or he was going to drag her out? And when she did not respond, did not get out the video, I mean, out the, the, the car, the vehicle, he pulls out his gun, his stun gun, and told her, while pointing it to her face, that he would light her up if she did not get out of the vehicle. All of this was caught on her camera from her perspective, from her view. And that is the video that has gotten me upset all over again. Because now I get to see it through our sister's eyes. Why do I say we complicit? I don't know about y'all brothers and sisters, but let me say this right now. Let me say this right now. This system is stacked up against us. It is stacked up against us. And unfortunately, there aren't enough of us that understand. And unfortunately, there aren't enough of us who are willing to go up against this system because they fear that if they fight with their brothers and sisters who are experiencing injustices, they too will be targets. And because of this, so many of our sister members are afraid to step up to the system. And I have to sit back and I had to truly think about this when I was watching the new video from Sandra Bland's perspective. I was watching this unique video that shows how he was so angry and so irritated. And he was going to do what he wanted to do. And that was make a, a, an arrest. And when I saw that and I sat back, there was something inside of me, if I'm honest with you guys. If I'm honest with you guys, there was something inside of me that said, beloved, don't argue with this man. Don't fight back, beloved. Stop talking. Stop calling him a punk. Stop calling him a P-U-S-S-Y. Beloved, Just do what he asked you to do. I felt that way when I watched this video today and I felt that way when I watched the video back in 2015. But let me make something very, very clear here. I did not feel that way because I felt that he was right. I did not feel that way because I felt that she was wrong. I felt that way because I was afraid of what would happen to her. I felt that way because I was afraid that nobody would come to her, her defense. I felt that way because I was afraid that people passing by would be too busy to stop to see if our sister was okay. 
I felt that way because I know that we are complicit in this system. We would much rather record a, uh, an arrest. We much rather record a fight. We much rather record police officers or white people threatening us than we are to step up and put these punks in their places. Yes, I said it. I said it. And I'm not afraid to say it. Say it. I got the spirit of Nat Turner. I got the spirit of Malcolm X. I got the spirit of Marcus Garvey. I got the spirit of Robert Zabukwe. I got the spirit of Steve Biko. I got the spirit of Fannie Lou Hamer. I got the spirit of Ida B. Wells. I got the spirit of Madam C.J. Walker. I got the spirit of the Black Party, the Black Panther Party, every last member. I am not afraid to say it. So when I saw the sister going back and forth with her, and I was like, come on, sister, stop. It's not because she was wrong because she wasn't. It's not because I felt he was right because he wasn't. But because I know my sisters and brothers ain't going to protect her. Not the, the officers who look like me, who have a badge. Not citizens passing by who look like me. Nobody. Because that's what it, it has been boiling down to. And this sister is now deceased. The family has sued, and it was a settlement on a lawsuit where the family had received $1.9 million. What is $1.9 million going to do in 2019, number one? Number two, what is $1.9 million going to do when our beloved sisters are deceased? And what is $1.9 million, number three, what is $1.9 million going to do when the attorneys get 33%? Look at here. Look at here. Look at here. So they dropped the charges against this officer. I'm not even going to say his name. Y'all can look him up. I'll give you his, his initials. State Trooper B.E. That's what we're going to call him. He's not even worthy for his name to be repeated. But we do have two brothers. I want to be able to say it. I want to be able to give, give these brothers a little bit of credit, but I'm not excited about it. I'll tell you why I'm not excited about it. But we have the state representative, Garnet Coleman, who is African-American. He is a lawmaker. He is planning on calling a legislative hearing before they go on recess. So he's going to call a hearing about the, the new video that surfaced that that pretty much says everything that this officer has said this officer has said was a lie this officer has stated that he feared for his life and the fact that she was recording him with her cell phone her cell phone visibly exposed in her hands pointing at his face indicates right there that this guy was not in fear of his life he saw a black woman with a loud ass mouth oh i said i was going to curse I said I wasn't going to curse, but I'm upset. He saw a black woman with a loud behind mouth and it irritated him and it made him angry and it made him mad at each chance she got to demean him and emasculate him. And he wanted to show her who was the boss and he did. There is another Republican, a black Republican named James White. What he is pushing for is a bill that will ban arrests on class C misdemeanors, which includes traffic stops for the most part. And Mr. Coleman is co-sponsoring this bill with him. So I think that I need to be able to give my brothers some credit 
but I still got my eye on them. I'm still watching them because just because they are politicians or in political positions don't mean that they are for us. I don't know these brothers like that. I'm not going to be too quick to throw them under the bus. I think these brothers are, I thank them for being brave enough to stand up and to do something about it. However, however, I don't get excited about these kind of things. And I'm going to tell you why as I transition into the next topic. I'm going to tell you why I don't get excited about these kind of things. Because while our sister is dead, Officer B.E., because he's not worthy to have his name stated, Officer B.E. right now is said to be working in the private sector where we don't know, supporting his wife and his kids, living a quiet life. While our sister is dead. Let me tell you something. As I begin to transition into my next topic. But before I leave this topic, let me say this. Let me say this real quick. Had the tables been turned? Had Miss White, I mean Miss Bland been white and Officer B.E. been black? And Miss White Bland hanged herself in a cell suspiciously and the last negative encounter she had was with officer B.E. who allegedly you know not allegedly hypothetically could be black right and after he is allegedly exonerated and living his life working in the private sector because he had agreed not to work in law enforcement anymore. And that's why the charges were dropped against them. The charges of perjury, perjury, even though we know through her, her cell phone camera that he lied. So the charges of perjury were dropped against him because he agreed not to work in law enforcement anymore. But had the tables been turned, and he was a black officer, and that was a white woman, and now this black officer is living a quiet life with his wife and kids in a private sector. Do you not think white America would have found him? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Do you not think white America would have been sending him death Threats? Do you not think white America would have been calling his wife and hanging up on her just to see their home? Do not think in the state of Texas, white America would not have thrown rocks through their windows, intimidating them? Do you not think white America would have put nooses in their trees, warning them. Do you not think white America would have driven him off the road as he was coming home to return to his wife and his kids, living his peaceful life? Do you not think that white America would have made his life chaotic? To the point where he would have had to move out of the state of Texas? Hello, Bobby. How you doing, Bobby Shaka? That's right, Chantilly. They would have found him and they would have hanged his behind in a tree. But what's wrong with us? Oh, I get it. I get it. It ain't in our DNA. I get it. We can kill each other, but we, we ain't going to do nothing to them. We're just going to depend on the injustice system to find mercy in our case and give us back a guilty verdict, which they almost never do. I get it. We're, we aren't going to do anything because 
We are just going to pray. We're just going to pray that it gets better. We're going to pray that Christ intercedes for us. We're going to pray that God fixes it because the Lord says, vengeance is mine. And so we ain't got to do nothing because God don't need us to fight his battles. We say the dumbest stuff. We say the dumbest things and we believe it. Why am I saying it's dumb? Why am I saying this is dumb? This is very dumb. See, this is what cognitive dissonance looks like. This is what cognitive dissonance looks like. On one hand, we say the Lord says vengeance is mine and God don't need us to fight his battles. But on another hand, we say because God told the children of Israel to take up arms and to go into the kingdom and to destroy everything and leave nothing behind. You see how that don't add up? Do you see how we say stupid things? In order, us, in order for us to justify why we're not doing anything, in order for us to justify why we are complicit in this system of injustices, racism, and white supremacy, do you see how stupid that sounds? We can tell you of all the battles in the Bible where God said, go forward and destroy. Am I making this up? Oh, am I making this up? We see it all through the Bible where God says the children of Israel are to pick up and go forth and fight that war. And anytime we hesitate it, anytime we hesitate it, and we say, oh my Lord, I'm scared. We look like grasshoppers. Y'all know that verse, right? All my Christians, y'all know that verse, right? We look like grasshoppers in comparison to our enemies who are giants. And we got scared. And then God said, when you go forward, you're going to lose because we weren't obedient. And then we went to go forward and fight and we lost because we doubted God at that time. But now we have all these Negroes, all these Negroes, that now says, oh, just pray about it. You know, that's right. I fast and I pray because I know God going to make a way. God going to work it out. I pass and I, I pray. I fast and I pray. I fast and I pray. And anything that we do does not involve action. The fasting and the praying is all passive. It is all passive. The same people who say this are quick to tell you of all the wars where God had told the people to go through, to march around the camp seven times and on the seventh day make a loud sound and bring the walls down and go in and destroy. I don't know what God y'all serve, but the God I serve is a warrior. I don't know what God y'all serve, but the God I serve is a warrior. But this joker, state trooper B.E., gets to go eat steak and eggs and lobster tails with his family while our beloved sister, Sandra Bland, is now deceased. Something ain't right. Something is not right. Religion has made us complicit in this system of injustices. Religion has made us complicit in this system of injustices. <laughs> yes, we are complicit. Yes, we are complicit. Let me tell you guys why. 
because I'm, I'm moving into the second half of this and then I'm out. So beloveds, I want you all to share the video. Share the video and like and follow me here on Facebook and all my social media channels. Because I'm teaching people how to build strategic alliances, how to build their or design their family blueprint. Because the family unit is our first line of defense. I say it all the time. I am showing people how to do this. And I think every last one of you guys who have already signed up for the workshop, which is inexpensive, and you get to eat with food made by a chef, a real chef, inexpensive, where you're walking away with a strategy because we cannot keep sitting down and being complicit in this. We cannot keep sitting back and hoping and praying and fasting and hoping and praying and fasting that God is going to fix it. Because God needs us to operate. He needs us in order for us to win this war. Peace, Queen Jade. How you doing, sis? That's why I need y'all to share the video. Like and follow me and sign up. Sign up for the workshop. The workshop address, the web, web address is theblackfamilyblueprint.eventbrite.com. Theblackfamilyblueprint.eventbrite.com. June 1st, Montclair, New Jersey. Sign up. Here's why you should sign up. Here's why you should sign up. Let's talk about the domestic terrorists. The crazy guy, Christopher Hassan. It's not worthy of me saying his name either, but I'm going to say his name because he's somebody that not only should be on the U.S. government's watch list, but he should be on our watch list. So we got to know his name, Christopher Hassan. That is the dude, y'all remember? I know y'all remember. That is the dude who, who had a hit list. And they found a mass arsenal of guns with this joker. This is the guy who was the, the, the Coast Guard Lieutenant. He is in the military, the Coast Guard Lieutenant. And he plans on killing several Democrats and several journalists, okay? They found a list and an arsenal of weapons for him to be able to carry out his plot. He is known to be a white supremacist. He is known to be a racist. And he was the Coast Guard Lieutenant. How many black people was under him? How many black people was under him? This dude, let me tell you the names of the people that he, he was planning on killing. This dude, let me see. Let me see. Mm. His hit list was Republic, well, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's out of New York. We have Chuck um, Schumann, another senator, out of New York. Cory Booker, out of New Jersey. Richard Blumenthal, out of Connecticut. Kamala Harris, of California. Beto O'Rourke. Of then we have the journalist, the CNN journalist, Don Lemon. Chris Cuomo, Van Jones, and M MSNBC's Chris Hayes, Abby Melba, and Joe Scarborough. All the people who talk out against racism, white supremacy, and the injustices are happening. To some extent. To some extent. To some extent. To some extent. I listen to some of their shows. The Joker. This is the Joker. Christopher Hassan. H-A-S-S-O-N. Christopher Hassan were, ha, had a list to kill these people. And here's how we become complicit in this. I'm going to tell y'all why we are complicit in it. This joker. Was, was, or is set to be released. And the Honorable Charles Day, who is the judge, feels 
that the weapons and the judge, the drug charges is not enough to detain him, is not enough to keep his freedom from him while, while he awaits trial. So this joker hasn't even been tried yet. So somebody might say, well, why are you saying we complicit in that? The judge made that decision. Do you jokers not know who the Honorable Charles Day is? Some of y'all gonna be mad. Cause some of y'all just Democrats, just, just to be Democrats, right? Because because that's what black people does. That I mean that's what black people do. We we just follow, we just follow the herd, we follow the sheep, whatever anyone else does, we just do it. But the Honorable Charles Day gets the Butter Biscuit Award because he is a brother. <laughs> the Honorable Charles Day gets the Butter Biscuit Award for today because he is a brother. He is an African-American judge who was nominated by President Barack Obama. Oh, see, y'all not ready for me. Y'all not ready for me. Y'all not ready for me. See, I bring receipts. I bring receipts. See, he was the judge back in 2010. There was a vacancy that came up in the federal district of the judge, right? It, which is a tenure position. Meaning once you get that position, you get that position till you die. There was a vacancy that was up. And, and President Barack Obama had assigned Charles Day to that position for the year, right? And then he nominated or renominated him again, but there was no vote on that. So he had to later, in 2011, he had to later rescind his nomination because he was getting a lot of pushback from the Republican senators. They were questionable. They, they, they were concerned about Charles Day's background, but no one really released his background. I got to pull more receipts so I can go a little bit more deep into his background, but he is a brother. Yeah, I bet y'all didn't know that. I bet y'all didn't know that. I bet y'all didn't know that this judge, this judge that has said that Christopher Hassan, a known white supremacist, who was arrested with a mass arsenal of weapons and a hit list to kill people. And he also had a plan and a thousand bullets to go shoot up black people. I'm not making this stuff up. Read up on his case. Not only did he have a hit list, in addition, he had set aside a thousand bullets to shoot up black people. And here it is, we have an African-American judge who is in the position to hold this clown in prison without bail, but instead decided to make a deal with his public defender attorney. Where the hell do you know stuff like that happens with a public defender? Where in black America does that happen when a public defender representing a black man gets that kind of justice? Where? Somebody has got to tell me where that happens when a public defender representing a black person who is accused of attempted murder gets him released to his mother-in-law's house or his father's in law house on house arrest with access to no internet services or no internet devices until his trial. But this black judge released this known white supremacist who was arrested with a mass of weapons and a hit list and a plan to kill African-Americans as many as he can. 
this black judge says, I don't see a reason to detain him. So therefore, I'm going to release him to his wife's mother's house or his wife's father's house who are divorced. And I'm also going to allow his wife, his wife's mother and his wife's father to put up their three houses for collateral should anything go wrong. And I'm also going to allow him to go to their house, which is 190 miles away from the court in which the charges was brought against them, 190 miles away. And guess what Christopher Hassan's father-in-law said? Christopher Hassan's father-in-law let them know let the powers that be know i have found a friend let's see this dumb stuff listen to what i'm saying people i have found a friend who is willing to take all of christopher's guns and hold them in his house and he's willing to do this immediately Do y'all hear this, sisters and brothers? Do you see why I say we got to be on code? Do you see why I say we are at war? And if we don't understand what we need to do in order to be better prepared, do you see why I say you must know your history? Do you see why I say that there are a lot of coons among us? Do you see why I say I know some of y'all don't get mad, but I'm not talking to the baby boomers that I love and appreciate that are feisty and they're ready to fight. I'm not talking to those baby boomers, but do you see why I say the, bo the baby boomers, like this judge, have set our asses up for failure? Oop, I cursed again. And the kicker is, this judge, the Honorable Charles Day, the black judge who let this white supremacist out on home arrest 190 miles away from the court to go to his mother or father-in-law's house to be monitored by his wife and her mother and father. And they're allowed to rotate to make sure he doesn't leave the house. Do you see what I'm talking about? This judge himself said that if if Christopher Hassan steps a foot out the door, his nervousness about releasing him will go into action. So if you are nervous about releasing him, why are you releasing him? If you have nervousness within you that says something might actually happen, if you have nervousness within you that says something might actually happen, but you're going to release him anyway, what is the deeper plan concerning you? See, because President Barack Obama rescinded the nomination to get him in, right? Because it was re it was requiring too much. He was getting too much pushback. So he rescinded the nomination to get him to a federal judge. Who wouldn't want to be a federal judge? See, when you get that federal position, your tenure, you ride that position out until you die. Chances of you losing that position are slim to none. So what butter biscuits are you going for, Mr. Charles Day, to get you into a position that you want that's going to be easy breezy for you? Like, who did you make a deal with that you are willing to release this white supremacist who had a hit list and a plan to kill hundreds of African Americans with a thousand bullets and who had the weapons to make it all possible. What does this judge got up his sleeve? That's right, Renee. Renee said he's not nervous. He's been bought and paid. 
Absolutely. He's been bought and paid. And why do I say we are complicit? Because we vote these people into positions. Because anytime we see a black face, we get excited. We get excited. Anytime somebody just says, I love all black people, we get excited. Anytime a white person says, you know what? I like what they're doing. I'm going to fund their operation. And that's all we see on the outside. We don't see the contract. We don't see the agreements. We don't see what they're asking for in return because nothing is free. Nothing in this world is free. We don't see any of that stuff. We just say, he all right. Anytime somebody come and eat our collard greens and chicken wings, we say, he all right. Anytime a white person says, you know what? I love black people. And a black person says, I support you no matter what. We say, he all right. Meanwhile, they're in bed with each other. We keep voting our own demise. We keep setting ourselves up for our own failure, failure because we are not making the demands that are necessary and we are not in unison. We are not out protesting this sucker right here. We are not out there at these meetings saying we fear for our lives. We are not making a stink about it. As a matter of fact, why is everybody so quiet about this? Why? We got to stop being emotional beings. We got to stop reacting emotionally about everything. Always a black person running for president. I'm going to vote for them. Always a woman running for president. I'm going to vote for her. Oh, she's talking reparations. I'm going to vote for her. Meanwhile, they turn around and they screw us and they kill us and they arrest us. And they ruin our neighborhoods furthermore. They don't get us out of our situation. They bring more exploiters in. And we don't sit down and take the time necessary to do the research on people. We just get excited. Meanwhile, this black behind judge just let out a white supremacist because he doesn't think that his, his weapons charges is enough to hold him. This black judge, Honorable Charles Day, just released a white supremacist who had a hit list on Democrats and journalists and black people, caught red-handed, had a whole plot and this black judge ain't treating this like an American terrorist. It's sad. It's sad. Like my sister Allison is saying, they are so concerned about Mrs. Curry. This is the stuff we, we like entertainment. And that's what propaganda does. Right, Allison? That's what propaganda does. Propaganda is going to put a Mrs. Curry out there and, and make some news about her. Propaganda is going to put a Kim Kardashian out there and not tell you guys the whole truth, only a little bit of the truth. Kim Kardashian ain't freeing nobody. The sister Brittany Barnett did. And it's her project. And she is a criminal justice advocate. And she has been traveling from state to state to state across the country, getting our brothers and sisters who had non-violent offenses on them out of prison. She has been doing it. And it was Kim Kardashian that says, how can I help you? How can I fund you? The only thing that Kim Kardashian is doing is fund this, funding this attorney to make it happen. It was her project and she was making it happen. But the problem is we don't fund people like our sisters and brothers who are making things happen. And here comes good old white Kim Kardashian that gets to come in the spotlight and take all the damn credit. And we excited about that. Meanwhile, a white supremacist has been let free who had a hit list to kill us and some other people.
and we concerned about celebrities. And we're excited about Jay-Z $800 ticket at Webster Hall on the black market. We're concerned about that and excited about Beyonce and, and, and her new Netflix thingy that she got up there. And we so concerned and excited about Kim Kardashian. And we so concerned about Steph and Aisha Curry. We are so sick people. Concerned about that. But when the real stuff hits home, we just gonna sit down and pray about it. We just gonna sit down and pray about it. We just gonna be passive. I ain't got nothing else to say to y'all today. I really don't. This is serious, people. We are at war. We are the targets. We have been the targets since 1619. And even before that, we are at war. And we need to pick up the spirits of our ancestors who all made a real difference. Not the ancestors that were bought by the white man. And y'all know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to throw any shade on their names publicly. But if you know your history, you know who I'm talking about. We are at war. And the people who are not afraid to speak out against this system, they're bringing them down left and right. They're censoring them. They're censoring them left and right. Any opportunity to get us to shut the hell on up. We are at war. And the fact that we are not doing anything about it makes us complicit. The fact that we must rather pull out our camera and record one of our brothers being choked to death but selling you loosely means that we are complicit. The fact that we rather record one of our brother's bodies as he lies in the street shot by officer while the officer sat in his car, rest in peace Mike Brown, we are complicit. The fact that we don't get angry and we don't show up and we don't go back for our own rightful revenge makes us complicit. The fact that we tell our children, say nothing, don't get these people upset, makes us complicit. The fact that we say, not all white people are bad. I don't know, I'm not gonna say that because not all white people are bad, makes us complicit. The fact that we rather share propaganda that is designed to destroy the image of the black man and a black woman makes us complicit. The fact that when people show up and they're giving you the tools and the resources to do what you need to do for your family, to build your community, to take your back your power, to take back your economic power, to take back your God divine power, and the fact that we don't support our brothers and sisters who are doing the work makes you complicit. The fact that we don't even know our ancestors, we can't even name them. We only know the popular ones, the popular ones that they have told us about, like Dr. King, makes us complicit. makes us complicit. So I say it like this. I say it like this, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I ain't going to lie to you guys. I ain't going to lie to you guys. If one of these... Ooh, I was going to say something out my mouth. Woof. Thank God I caught myself. But one of these jokers, if one of these jokers were to pull me over, tell me to get out the car, of course I'm going to be recording, but I ain't making a scene. I'm not fighting. I'm not making a scene. I will find another way around it. You know why? Not because that's the right thing to do, but because I know half of my brothers and sisters ain't going to do nothing. The only thing they want to do is record my ass getting beat. Ooh, I said a curse again. That's the only thing they're going to do is to record me getting a beat down. The only thing my brothers and sisters are going to do is to post about it on social media and say, rest, rest in peace, Dr. Shauna. The only thing my sister and brothers are going to do, I'm like, yeah, she was doing good things. And then finally, when I'm dead, they ain't going to know everything that I do. They ain't going to know all the lives that I have touched and changed when I'm dead. So for that reason, 
I ain't getting out the car. I'm not starting no fight. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Because these jokers out here that say they my brothers and sisters will let my behind get killed and murdered because we are complicit. Family, you're in New Jersey, or if you're within traveling distance to New Jersey, I suggest you show up for my workshop. I suggest you take part in it. The website is the Black Family Blueprint. Eventbright. Com. The Black Family Blueprint. Eventbright. E V E N T B R I T E. Dot com. The Black Family Blueprint. Eventbright. Com. I suggest you guys show up. I said you suggest you guys start getting serious about this. Cause just because we have black faces in political chairs and black faces with badges and black faces who say they are attorneys, just because we have those black faces who are doctors, it doesn't mean that they're not getting their butter biscuits. It doesn't mean that they're not going to set your behind up. It doesn't mean that they care about you. We are at war and we got to start knowing each other. We got to start knowing what we do. We got to start knowing where to go for. We need, we need to start putting our armies together. We need to be collective. We need to be meeting off of social media. So if you're serious about that, let's come, let's learn, and let's take it from there. Let's take it from there. Let's exchange contacts. Let's set up meetings. Let's take it from there. I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all. But I see what's going down. And I got receipts. I got receipts. So while y'all rushing to get excited to vote in just any Democrat, any Democrat would do, I ain't doing none of that. Because I'll be even more pissed when they screw us over than the person that's in the chair that I know. I already know what he's going through. He's been doing what he's doing, and it hasn't impacted us because we have been through worse. We have been through worse. Until people start speaking to us and until people start getting what we want on the table, until they start speaking to a black agenda, until they recognize that we need to be a protected population, until they take measures in law to make, make sure we are a protected population and we get our due services that's due to us and only us. I will no longer be complicit in this system. I'm here to tell y'all. Sign up the Black Family Blueprint .com. The Black Family Blueprint .com. Let's start doing things differently. I love you guys. Peace and blessings.